am the new director of instruction at Creighton Farms in Aldi, Virginia, so a little bit of a change for me this year. As you might know me from other years in the past, I've been running an academy in the area, and so I will be moving into a little bit of a different setting, but very excited. It's an amazing facility, and I encourage you to call me and come out and come see me at uh, this beautiful club just down the road from here. I'm going to be talking today about finding your true swing. That was the title of the presentation listed, and uh, you might be wondering what that really means. And it's really where I've come in my journey of coaching to this point to try to learn as much as I can and simplify it down to the most basic message that can help the most people. Um, I've done a lot of teaching the last dozen or more years and mostly to mid to high handicappers. I've been fortunate to work with a lot of really good junior players, some of which are here today. And I've had a really fun time teaching all levels of players. But I think that as an elite teacher, the more I've gone along and gotten recognition, you get, it's easy to get sucked into wanting to know as much as you can about technology all the data, all the numbers, what they mean. And so the job of the teacher is to try to translate what it is that all this technology is telling us and give you, the student, the golfer, the best message that I can in the simplest terms so that you understand what to do. It's not so much what's wrong or what's right, it's what's the plan and what do you just need to do to get better. It's very easy to get sucked into the details, and people want to know details. So it's this balancing act between being detailed and being very left brain, and trying to keep people free enough in their ability to make changes in their right brain so that they can move to their best potential. So have you ever heard the term analysis by paral paralysis by analysis? This is exactly sort of the core of what I'm saying is I'm trying to get as far from that as I can in my approach to teaching the more and more and more I teach. So I've got a little quote up here. Hopefully you all can see the sign. It says, a true swinging motion cannot fail to produce perfect timing. That sounds kind of wordy, but I want you to think about that and read it just a few times to yourself as I'm speaking up here, and I'll say it one more time. A true swinging motion cannot fail to produce perfect timing. The guy that wrote this wrote it back in 1930s named Ernest Jones. I'm a big fan. It's one of the first golf books I ever read called Swing the Clubhead. And the core message of that, I can pull any swing problem, any mental problem, and even physical limitations, and I can take this and apply it to make you better. It's that simple. Because if you trust in the nature of what a true swing really is, first of all, it's your true swing. It's not trying to mimic someone else's true swing, which I think is also really important because every person here is different. Every student I meet is different. Their body, their abilities, the way their joints are moving and structured. So the more you can make a comfortable move that's effective for you, you're gonna feel better, you'll perform better, and so therefore you'll have more fun and play better golf. So it's just this nice chain, it's a nice little domino effect. For some of those in the audience that have maybe played some competitive golf, maybe any of the amateurs back there too, have you ever played in a, a club event or in a VSJ event or anything like that? It's easy to feel pressure in a match. Maybe it's just with friends, maybe it is a formal tournament. When you're feeling pressure, the worst thing you can do is get into that paralysis by analysis mindset. You can't be fixing stuff on the golf course. Yet we all have a swing thought or two. So we have to be very careful with what we choose to think about because it will affect our performance. So the more we can think about something that's gonna allow us to perform at our highest potential, the better we can be. And my suggestion is that the focus needs to be more on a true swinging motion as opposed to trying to be in a certain position, trying to do something with your hands, the takeaway, whatever. So I'm painting a bigger picture here today and I'm gonna go through some specific drills also to help you feel what I'm talking about because at the end of the day you need to have something concrete that you can go and test what I'm saying. 
But this is what I have been doing in my lessons. The more and more research I've been doing, it all comes back to this. And so this is kind of where I am in my, in my coaching, uh, in this point in my career. So what the heck is a true swing? So a true swing is something that is free, fluid, rhythmic, natural, efficient, and uses momentum. Momentum is a really, really key phrase because momentum does all the hard work for us. So if you get a club in a swinging motion, right, so here's a static club. If I just get it swinging, guess what? Now it's in motion. I'm not helping that. It's already in motion. There's natural momentum that's happening here, right? An object that's set in motion is going to stay in motion, right? So therefore, if we use the idea of creating momentum in our swing, it does the work for us of creating the proper timing, which goes back to that first quote, right? Timing of what? Timing of the bottom of the swing, where it happens. Timing of the fact that the club face is square and not twisting around somewhere. So we can simplify this way, way down, people, okay? So what I'm saying is if you want all these things, which all the best players describe, they describe being very, very on autopilot when they're in the zone. It just, everything feels so easy. When you hit your best shots, have they felt effortless? You can barely feel the ball coming off the club face, I bet, right? So we want that feeling all the time. So why can't we have it? Because we get in our own way and we do something, which is at the bottom here, I have a big X through it. It's a big word, Rohan, what does that say? Manipulation. And so when I'm watching somebody, if a first time student or even a long time student, what I'm trying to put my finger on is where is the manipulation happening? Is it happening here? Is it happening at the bottom? Is it happening maybe even at a dress? Manipulation is tension. Manipulation is added and applied pressure where we don't want to have it. So if I told you that the swing, a true swing, is all about just natural momentum, is there any applied pressure? No. Maybe in one spot. Maybe in one spot. Where would that be? You have to get the swing started. There has to be an initial move of the club back, right? If this is not moving, how am I going to get it back? Did you see what I just had to do there? I mean, unless I crank my wrist, but now I'm applying force. But if I just sort of swing it back, now it's in motion. Does that make sense? So if I take my setup and I swing the club back, it happened from here, not from here. My hands are clamps on the club and they're preset to keep the face straight. So if I just turn back, it's gonna follow me. So there's a lot of discussion over the years, different teachers, different periods of time, what gets the swing started, first, second, third, what happens first, how do you take the club away, blah, blah, blah. You can feel whatever you want to feel, but my suggestion is to make it smooth and to make it so that there is no manipulation. If you remember that word, leaving here, I hope that that makes an impact on you. And you can feel your own manipulation if you pay attention. But most of us are too busy trying to do something and fix something that we lose our ability to get awareness as to what's actually happening in our swing. So, let me ask you a question. Who thinks their practice swing is better than their real swing? Raise your hand. Who thinks their real swing is better than their practice swing? Raise your hand. Okay, most people would hopefully agree, I saw more hands on the first question, that their practice swing is a better move. Is it more comfortable? Is it freer? Is it more fluid? You're not trying to actually hit at something yet, right? There's no pressure, so there's no tension, so it is a true swing. So what I've been doing lately is I've been taking people's practice swing, and I, I would challenge you to do this. 
is get a friend and have them video you or get a little tripod that you can stick in the ground or something. They sell these for your iPhone. And film your practice swing. And then film your real swing, back to back, two shots in a row. And I want you to notice the differences. So that would be your homework. And I want you to see how much better your practice swing probably looks. Because nine times out of 10, that's what I see. And the student is shocked. And there's this light bulb moment like, oh my god, that's, I can't believe that that's what I look like. And then I can't believe that's, that's what I look like. <laughs> So it's great because then what you'll realize, just like they've realized, is that's your true potential of what your true swing is. The ball makes us crazy. Why does it make us crazy? Because most golfers are trying to hit at the ball, or again, this little voice inside your head, those squirrels start running around and they say to you, oh yeah, what am I supposed to be thinking about right now? I have to remember to bend my right elbow and I have to remember to shift my weight. If you're trying to remember to shift your weight, you're not really swinging to the target, are you? Okay, so who's ever played any kind of sport where they've thrown a ball? Okay, all right, Carl, come up here. Okay, I want you to stand here, face the screen, and just throw the ball as hard as you can. As hard as you can, yeah? All right, what did he just do? Followed through, he stepped, he stepped, and he threw, and he turned his body, and he pivoted. Aren't those all good things that we want to do in golf? Right? So here, here's just an iron. I want you to just make a golf swing. And Carl is an experienced player, high school player. Just swing. Okay, so if I told you nothing else but to just think about swinging to your target, it should be pretty easy to allow yourself to move towards the target. Would you agree? So hopefully I'm painting a picture for you. If you struggle with hanging back, if you struggle with, thank you very much, good swing. If you struggle with casting the club down, hitting fat shots, you're not being enough target aware. You're probably more ball bound. Try to get target focused and connect the ball with the target. That's a picture that you want to paint in your mind before you hit the shot. Not what I should be doing, but where am I going and how do I want the ball to get there? Because we are way smarter than we give ourselves credit for. And if we give ourselves a visual of how we want the ball to move or how we want the swinging motion to feel, the mechanics take care of themselves and honestly the shot shape can take care of itself. So with what we see with better players is they paint the picture in their head, they want to hit a fade, they want to hit a draw, and they just do it. How? Is it a mystery? Right? You want to hit a shot left to right? Hit a shot left to right. If you want to hit a shot right to left, hit a shot right to left. You have to make your body move to what you're trying to do. So why this is also a layer of what's important about just making a true swing is that you will naturally adapt to your lie, to the shot you want to hit, to the conditions, the wind, whatever, because you're going to be focused on making a consistent, free, true, swinging motion, in balance, within your realm of control. Okay, so we've discussed what a true swing is. What else is next here? I've got some more. Okay, so this is a good one. This is pretty small, hold it up. All right, internal and external. So what I'm talking about here is where are you focused mentally, your thought process. So a lot of you are probably here most of the time on the driving range and then you do that on the golf course. And you never get out of this mode. This, this, is, this is the left brain. We're trying to get into our right brain and be a little bit more free with our thought process. But that doesn't mean we have to just be completely blank, although that sometimes can be a good thing. 
But notice the difference in what I've written here. I said, keep my head down, turn my hands, hinge my wrist, don't sway. Don't is probably the worst thing you can say to yourself, by the way. External thoughts would be swing the weight of the club. And I'm going to show you a drill here to feel that in a second. Trace a wide arc through the ball, maybe to the target. Okay, tick tock, maybe something about rhythm that incorporates the feelings of what you're trying to accomplish. Swing to your target. So those are more external cues. Another idea of an external cue would be maybe if you're practicing, instead of practicing how you're doing something, it's more where you're moving to. So for example, maybe you're swinging over the top. You could put a basket or a golf tee or something out here a little to the right of where you're hitting and focus on trying to swing towards that object. So now you're putting your focus outside of you instead of in here and what you're mechanically trying to do. So our intention has to be specific and clear and simple and there are a lot of studies when we talk about motor learning that show that if you can give yourself an external cue, it's better than an internal cue. So think about that when you're trying to come up with what your swing thought might be that helps you be the best you can be because it's better if you focus outwards rather than inwards. Okay, so there's another reason why sometimes we get all jammed up and we don't let ourselves just truly swing. And that is fear of results, pressure, right? You feel that pressure in tournaments. So I want you to dig a little deeper the next time you have to go out and play. Maybe it's best to even try this when there is nobody around. Maybe you're playing by yourself or just with your, you know, a good friend or a spouse where there's no pressure. Can you truly not care where the ball goes and just swing? I would actually encourage you to try this, if you can, into a net at first. Because there's no result. You can't see any ball flight, right? So who cares where the ball went? Nobody's watching you on a driving range. Nobody's seeing the result. Can you actually truly relax your body, relax your hands to a point where you can make your most comfortable, best swing and not care where the ball goes? We're so concerned with the results before we even struck it that we get in our own way. We're in our own kitchen. So, overwhelmingly, if you read golf books, mental books, those types of things, if you talk to Rotella and these guys, everything is about getting from a training mindset into a trusting mindset. Can you actually trust yourself? Who cares? You actually make that leap, knowing that you're the only one that's going to have to go hit that next shot, and you'll make the best of it wherever it goes. It will free you up to make your best move. The worst thing you can do is to try to steer it. It just makes things worse. This is easier said than done, but that's why I'm saying start with a way where maybe you can just scratch the surface on letting go a little bit. It starts with grip pressure. It starts with a swing feel. It starts with focusing less on what you're doing and where you're trying to go. That will free you up, okay? So I have something interesting maybe all of you can try if you'd like. You stand up and put your arms out. I know there's probably people next to you, but just you can just do this quickly. And I want you to just sort of breathe in, breathe out. And as you breathe out, just... Okay, great, great job. Once more time. Out and just let them fall, fall. Okay, so that's gravity. If you just truly just let your arms just drop, isn't that like gravity pulling them down? Right? So if we make a swinging motion, doesn't gravity sort of help the club come back down? And if we're swinging to the target, doesn't our body pivot to the target just like Carl did when he threw the ball? So if you swing your arms back and you let them fall as your body's turning to the target, guess what happens? Momentum. The club will get back down. You don't have to force it, right? And so this is a feeling of trying to get gravity and momentum to help you accomplish what physics has already got going for you. You don't have to do as much. You don't have to try as hard. So um, the biggest lesson 
that applies to everyone is less is more. And that doesn't mean be lazy, but for most people, it's taking that grip pressure from an eight or a nine down to a six or a seven and finding that happy medium. It's taking the swing speed from where we think we're trying to swing, trying to swing at 100 miles per hour, and when we actually try to swing at 80, we actually swing at 95 and surprise ourselves, you know? So slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So when we try to manipulate and push and pull and try hard to hit it hard, we're not adding speed. There's a difference between fast and hard. There's a difference between speed and power. We want speed in the golf swing. Speed gives us distance. Power does not give us distance. So even though the long drive guys look pretty fit and muscular, and they have super long golf swings. They also have really long equipment, by the way, which helps them hit it that far. They have tremendous speed. Sadlowski's not that big of a guy. He's really not. He's fit. He has tremendous strength and core. But he's not like this bodybuilder. He's not. Have you guys seen his stature? He's not a big guy. How does he hit it so far? Sadlowski? Jamie Sadlowski? Yeah, have you guys know who I'm talking about? All right, so we want to try to trust and let go. We want to get rid of that hit instinct, and we want to connect with our target a little bit more. So I'm going to show you my, I've got five drills for you. I just want to make sure I've gotten through my signs here. <laughs> All right, this is just kind of a funny one. As I wrote this, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to come out right. <laughs> but hey, you know what? It's really what I mean to say. It's just say no to grabbing, pushing, pulling, forcing, and trying hard, and most of all, muscling. That's the biggest thing I see, whether you're sometimes juniors. Um, I've had a few students lately, wink, wink, where we've talked about 70%. They, they can totally swing faster than that and harder than that, but they fall over, they lose their balance, and they don't really hit it any better. They, they miss the middle of the club face. So if you can, Commit to swinging as fast as you can with balance and control and still find the middle of the club face, then you're probably in a good place. But don't overdo it because you have to keep an eye on that good solid contact. The minute that gets compromised, you're losing a ton of distance anyway. So focus on good solid contact first, then add speed. The way you're going to get good solid contact is when the club face is square and your body is moving freely and efficiently through the swing. All right, so now for the drills. First one, I've got this on my website now, just written down on one of my pages there, and I'm sure there's a few other clips of me doing this over the years. Maybe I think even I did it on, uh, on Golf Channel when I was on in November. Is take a golf club and swing it upside down, back and forth, about six or seven times. And so once you're doing that, the club is basically weightless. There's no weight at all here in the grip end. So when you flip it around, all of a sudden, and this is going back to my original quote, the guy's book was called Swing the Club Head. It's swing the weight of the club head is what it is because now all of a sudden there's this weight that I'm feeling more so than maybe I have felt in a while. And so if I feel that, especially with an iron, that is going to carve that circle through the air for me. If I have awareness of the club moving around me at all points in time, I can feel the shape of my swing do anything I want it to do. If I can't feel that because I'm gripping too tight or I'm too busy thinking about other stuff or distracted or whatever, I can't feel anything happening. We have to have awareness and we have to build instincts in our swing off of what we're feeling. And a really important example of this is again, when conditions aren't perfect and you have a downhill lie or an uphill lie or a side hill lie, which happens all the time, we have to adjust, right? We have to adjust and so having awareness of where we are in space, if the ball is above our feet, you have to react to that. Your normal swing has to adjust a little bit. It's a different plane. So you have to be able to let yourself swing on any plane. You have to imagine that just because you're standing a little closer or a little further doesn't mean that it's gonna be a bad shot. If you're paying attention to the ball, 
and you have awareness of where the club is, hey, and eye coordination is an amazing thing, and everybody has it. I don't care if sometimes students say, I'm not very good, I'm not an athlete, I don't have good hand eye coordination. Everybody has hand eye coordination. Okay, and you can develop it, you can get better at it. So, you watch these trick shot guys. Granted, they're pretty amazing, and they practice a lot. Okay, but they can hit the ball on any angle. They can throw it up and hit it, right? I mean, think about other sports, tennis, baseball, the ball is coming in at all different angles. Granted, once in a while we swing and miss, but for the most part, you can make contact. Hey everybody, thank you for watching my presentation from the Dallas Expo Center this winter. I just wanted to wrap up with a little summary since my recording got cut off at the end of the show. So a uh, few things I wanted to note is one, I really do believe that everyone has the ability to find their true swing. If you go through a progression of exercises and also some experimentation with developing your own instincts, your awareness of the club around you, the awareness of what the experience is that you have during your swing versus what you want it to be, which is comfortable, free, rhythmic, and repeatable. So I challenge you to explore some of these ideas. Uh, my book will be out in 2017. I'm working on it currently, so I'm excited about that to share with you more on this topic. And in the meantime, if you're interested in coming out for coaching, please feel free to connect with me via my website at www.larkingolf.com. I look forward to helping you guys in the future uh, be the best that you can be in golf and enjoy the experience you have playing, uh, the time you spend out there with your friends, your family, uh, maybe in competition, and maybe what you'll learn a little bit from exploring these ideas of really finding your true swing in golf will even help you find yourself a little bit. So. Uh, best of luck, and uh, please stay in touch. Thanks for watching.